All right, so we're out here today. I got a 2023 uh, Ram 2500 um, Longhorn, like super nice truck. Uh, we're putting a leveling kit on the front. Uh, this is made by Wicked Manufacturing. Uh, as you can tell, it's a lovely weather today. It's raining, truck soaking wet, but we're gonna get it done. Um, I'm gonna take some before and after measurements so you can see actually how much this lifts your truck. Uh, the kit that I have is a three and a half inch um, Wicked kit. And I'm going to show you what comes in the box. There ain't much, but it's, it's what you need. All right, so here's what you get. You get your leveling kit. It's got the Wicked logo in it. And then you get your shock extenders. And your two new bolts for the bottom. And that's it. That's a three and a half inch level kit. Um, I put one of these on, uh, I, think, I think this guy and the other guy was actually... Uh, business partners, but I put one on a white over tan one uh, a few months back, and we put 24 by 14s with 33s on it, 35s, I'm sorry, and a bumper spacer kit that they sell, and I had to do a little trimming on the fenders, but uh, it worked out good. Uh, I'll try to insert a picture right here. And... Uh, it worked out good, but it did rub a little bit in the front. Uh, as far as I know, this truck's staying on stock wheels. I uh, don't really know a whole lot about it, but uh, anyway. I also can tell you that when you get these kits, they come raw, uh, non-painted, and you paint them whatever color you want. Um, looks like they already stuck these on the box and just painted them flat black, and we're fixing to stick them guys in. All right, so this is how I always do them. I don't put the rear arms under them. I put the one set of arms under the frame. I put them, here's your track bar. I put them on the frame behind it because you want this track bar to be able to move. If I was picking it up on the lift just to pick it up, I would put the bar here. That's actually what that's for is for a lift arm. But I need the suspension to travel, so I'm gonna put it there. If you are doing this on the ground with jack stands, you're gonna wanna jack the track up as high as you can get it and put your jack stands in the same spot. Uh, that way you can let the rear end droop and you can get the coils and all out and that way it, it'll go a lot easier. Some people, man, they jack them up, they take the wheels off. You can do that too. I always just done them with the wheels on them and I'll show you how. Next. From the ground to the fender factory is 40 and a half inches. The other side is actually a hair uh, lower. It's like 40 and a little over a quarter. Um, but this side is 40 and a half and I'm going to reference off just the driver's side. All right, uh, first thing I'm gonna do is crawl under there and take the bottom of the shocks loose. Um, I'll let you know what size that is in a minute. I believe it's a 21, but right, so here's what we got. We, we just right here, punter behind the tire. Uh, just reach right up under here. That is a 21 and it's got a catch nut on the back. Uh, so you don't have to try to hold the nut on the backside on this bolt. When you put the new bolt in for the spacer, you will have to get a wrench on it, but this one right here, you don't. do that on both sides all right so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the sway bar loose uh there's two 15s on each side right here um you take those loose and then that sway bar will just fold down against the rear end uh you can take them loose over here but we found it's a lot faster to take them loose here uh those four bolts uh pay attention when you take them loose because if you uh take them out and you don't go ahead and pull it down and you land up under there that thing will pop you in the forehead uh, we learned that from bold experience. Uh, got several, several knots on my forehead when I worked it. Right, as you see, we took those four bolts out. We got a sway bar hanging. What what that does is it lets the rear end uh, droop farther. If you don't take that loose, it kind of it kind of binds up, and uh, you have a hard time getting the the coil spring and the lift spacer back in. Uh, once you got the sway bar loose and the bottom of the shocks loose. Um, if you're doing it on jack stands, you, at this point, you would let the floor jack down under the rear end. Uh, you, your truck's gonna be supported with jack stands. Here, I'm using the ground to hold the rear end. I'm gonna use the lift to pick the truck up away from it. All right, see so we uh, pull the group as far down as it goes. Full frame's loose. Pull that out from there. Rubber isolator. 
what I normally do with these is uh, there's a stud there. Um, it's got a piece of metal in it. I take a cut off wheel and cut it off because there's there's nowhere for it to go. If you buy a rough country level kit or something, it'll have a hole there where this will pop up in there. But this wicked doesn't. So uh, I usually cut those off and it's not going to hurt anything. You have the entire weight of a 7,500 pound truck holding all this together. It's not going to go anywhere. Um, so cut that off next. Just like that. So we're going to put this isolator on top of this level kit. I'm going to stick this back in here. I'm going to stick this back in here and I'm going to line the bottom of the coal back up to where it was. Uh, there's a rubber isolator down there where you can get it lined up. I'm going to stick this over the top. I'm going to twist the rubber until it's on top of the coal like it's supposed to be. And then I'm going to turn the level kit where the logo is outside. Knock it in there. Let's go do the other side. Uh, occasionally you have to get a little persuasive right there that... Um, I had to take the hammer and just tap that in. I barely hit it and it went in. Uh, you shouldn't have to beat the crap out of it. It should just go on in pretty easy. So, uh, all right, so the cold spring pressure in. We're gonna sit it back down a little bit and put the shock extenders on. My help just showed up. Hey. Hey, I'm glad you're here. You gotta help me hold one of these cold springs. You might lose a finger today. Uh, I already almost lost a finger today. You might, you might almost lose a finger. Okay. okay. No, not okay. All right. You gotta pay me. All right, so this is the shock extender. Um, the factory bolt went in, you saw that earlier. It goes from the back of the truck towards the front of the truck. What you're gonna do is grab that shock and turn it 90 degrees. Uh, and then you're gonna put the new bolt through the top and you're gonna put the old factory bolt with the catch nut on the bottom. Real simple. Uh, just gives you that much more travel out of your factory shock. All right, so once you get your shock extender bolted up, it should look like this. Uh, you reuse the factory bolt in the bottom. Uh, and then it comes with a new bolt. Your factory bolt is a 21 or a 13 16. The top bolt is a 22 or a 7 8. Uh, you got to hold the nut on the back side. It's also the same size. So you're going to need a couple a couple sockets and wrenches, different ones. Um, but yeah, all in all, it's very simple. All right, so we got the back of the shocks and the shock extenders all bolted back up. Uh, the only thing left to do is put the sway bar back on. I can't film it because it's going to take both hands, but you're just going to stick it back up there. And then you got a bolt that's got a catch in the frame so you don't have to try to start a nut on it. Uh, we're going to bolt that back up and then I'll come back and show you what the height difference was with the tape measure. And uh, maybe back it out of the shop. It's still raining, but try to get y'all a couple clips of how it's sitting after, uh, after the level kit's installed. So, back on full weight. Let's grab the tape, see what's that. So, our early measurement was 40 and a half. The new measurement is uh, a sixteenth of an inch short of 44. So, uh, that is about dead on three and a half inches of lift, which is what they advertise. Um, I've done several of these kits before, so I know it's going to ride good. Uh, I don't have to show you no riding videos or nothing like that. I know it's going to ride good. It's going to ride just like every other level kit um, that's built the same way, rough country and all those. Uh, ready lift, everybody makes a level kit for these trucks. It's pretty much identical to that. Um, but I'm going to back it out, get y'all a couple clips of it in the rain, the stance it's got, and uh, let me measure the rear real quick see where it's at. is about 43 and a quarter so this actually has uh the front about three quarters of an inch higher than the back so um it may be a little too much for some of y'all they sell a one and a half inch and a two and a half inch 
Uh, the two and a half may be more suited for you if you uh, don't want the front higher than the back. But uh, this is a good stance overall. Um, I've, I've done a ton of these things the same way. Uh, you can fit a nice, you can fit a 37 on a stock wheel with a wheel spacer. Uh, I know that'll fit. Um, shoot, you can fit 35s on these trucks with no lift. So they got big fenders. Uh, Also, one last note, the steering wheel is going to be off just a hair. Uh, the older ones, you could break the two jam nuts loose, and there was an adjustment, bolt, adjustment uh, sleeve under there you could turn and straighten the steering wheel up yourself, but the new ones have got an updated track bar, and I'm not sure about that. Uh, so I'm just going to recommend him take it to the dealership, uh, which you should probably do also, have it aligned in a row. These trucks are like really nice. Hey, I appreciate y'all watching, everybody. Um, very simple. You can do it yourself. Don't be scared. Till next time.